Hey, 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 everybody. James here from Mortis Media. And we are back again today with another Unreal Engine tutorial. And in today's tutorial, we are going to be looking at how to edit animations. Now, this is editing pre-existing animations within Unreal Engine. However, you can also use these processes to create your own animation assets as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. So as you can see here, we are in Unreal Engine 5 in the third person template right where we left off in the previous video. The only thing I've added is a few animations for the purposes of this particular demonstration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you first how to be able to edit animations by utilizing a keyframe option within Unreal Engine. So we're going to open up this idle animation here that I have. Now one thing I just do want to note as well is that if you're unfamiliar with what keyframing is, it's essentially the process of creating points in space-time, uh, you know, in space-time in reference to the animation, um, for when to do things. So if I go ahead and I play this animation, let's go ahead and click, you'll see that he's got some kind of like nice breathing idols and kind of like a nice motion to his arms and shoulders. All of these are being keyframed. So like from this point to this point, when they go back up, this is where the keyframes are being set. So what we're going to do is edit how these are set up. So this one's a really good animation because as you can see here, this hand and this hand are both clipping into the thighs. So how we're going to change that is very, very easy. We're going to go ahead and search for the root bone for the arms. Now when I say root bone, I don't mean the bone that's literally named, uh, named root. What I mean by this is the bone that is associated to the rest of the structure for that particular part of your character. So. For example, if I search up the clavicle, you'll see the clavicle L, clavicle R, okay? But if I search on arm, so mainly what I'm looking for is the arm structure that I'm trying to move, you'll see that clavicle before spine and all these other options is the root of everything else. The lower arm, upper arm, the twist, everything is associated to the clavicle. So this is the root for the arm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight on the clavicle and we're also going to want to make sure, so this is how your snapping grid is going to look like by default. What we're going to do is click on the middle one here for disabling rotation snapping. And we're going to disable that. We're not going to be scaling or uh, moving anything, so we don't need to mess with those. We just need to make sure that we turn the rotation scaling or snapping off. And then we can go ahead and start rotating some things. So what we're going to do is highlight on the clavicle and make sure we are in uh, press E to be able to get into rotation mode. And then we're just going to start kind of moving it out just a slight bit, just like that. Then we'll go to the upper arm, and then we'll move it out just a little bit more. Actually, you know, we'll move this in a little bit, just like so. And I know it looks like I'm moving the arm back in, but what's cool is watch this. So now that I've straightened out the lower arm, you'll see his hand is no longer tied in to the rest of the skeleton, or tied in, uh, like, uh, clipping into the mesh. But I can also make some other adjustments here as well. So I can go to the upper arm again, and just move it out just a little bit, perfect. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna grab the clavicle R, rotate it out just a smidge, grab the upper arm, rotate it out just a smidge, and the lower arm, and do the exact same thing. Now the upper arm's a little out too much, so I'm gonna bring it in just a tad right about to there. I like that. That looks good. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and I can play my animation. And you'll see there's some minor clipping on the fingertips, but it's a lot better than what it originally was. It just looks a little bit more natural and like he's actually a physical character within the world versus just something that, you know, his hands can go into himself. You know, normal people can't do that. If you can do that, though, I'll be very, very impressed. Um, at least without, like, actually screwing up your entire leg. So what we're going to do now, though, just getting back on track here, uh, is we're going to look at how to be able to save all this now that we've created the points where we want it to stay. Because if we play the animation again, we have all of these points staying right where they should, but if I close this, they're not going to stay. So this is how we save it. We select any bone. It doesn't even have to be one that you've edited. And then we're going to click this button up here that says key. So you can click this, or you can also press S on your keyboard. So we're just going to click this button. And as you can see, it added the lower arms, the upper arms, the clavicles. All of our tracks that we changed are now right here. And if you're familiar with animation at all, this is amazing, because normally you have to add these individually. Uh, they won't add all at once. So this is a great feature that I personally like within Unreal Engine. So now we have the entire sequence 
keyed in so we don't have to do anything else. We can just click on save, close this down. And now if I open this back up again, you'll see his hands are no longer clipping into his side. Very, very, very nice. So, but let's say we wanted to do some more drastic animations to that. Is that possible? Well, absolutely. So we're gonna go ahead and just duplicate this idle really quickly and we're gonna go idle underscore copy. And then from the copy, we're gonna go ahead and open this up really quickly. And as you can see, we have all of our tracks that we had added previously. However, we're gonna make um, one small change. So we're gonna look for the arm. And right, we're gonna look for the lower arm and the upper arm. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some small changes to this. So I'm gonna kind of move the arm up, move the arm out, take the lower arm, kind of move it in a little bit, go back to the upper arm, move it back. Something like this. And I'll just move the arm in a little bit more. And just a little bit there. And a little bit more on the, yeah, kind of like right there, like, you know, like he's thinking. So now if I play the animation, you'll see his arm just stays in position. It's not going to do anything. But if I, let's say, scrub to frame 30, okay, keep the, uh, the tracker for the timeline on frame 30, and then I go in just like before, select on a bone, and click on key. So what's going to happen is that now his arm from frame 0 to frame 30 will go into that position like so. So now he's kind of thinking and boom. So this is where it gets really, really cool at being able to edit animations. And you can edit the forearms, the spine, the head rotation, the legs, whatever you want to change. All of the bones within the hierarchy of the skeleton are available for messing around with. So really, really, really cool. So we're just going to go ahead and save that and close this down. And now we're going to look at another way to be able to edit animations. And this is by adding two animations together and turning them into a new animation sequence. So how we do that is we're going to right click on an empty space, go to animation, and then click on animation montage. It's going to bring up the skeletal selection window here. And we're going to look for our main character skeleton, which for me is the twin blast. If I can type. There we go. Alright, so now we're going to name this Flippy, whoop, we're going to name this one Flippy Boy 1, okay, and then we're just going to go ahead and open that up. So now by default you can see we have all of our hierarchy for the skeleton, and we have the character in a T-pose, but we don't have any animations in there. So this is how we can change that really quickly, is we just go to our asset browser, search for the animation that you're looking for, in this case we are going to use the back handspring. We're going to drag this, so we're going to click and drag, and pull it right over to the group, default group default slot uh, channel here. We're just going to drop that right into there. Now, as you can see, if I play the animation, he has a little black, you know, kind of back handspring kind of motion there, which is really, really, really nice. But now, let's say we want to add a secondary animation to that. We want to make him do a bit of a kind of a backflip at the end of it, sort of like a gymnast move. So now I'm going to, just like before, we click drag so i'll delete this and show you guys again so we click on it drag and we're dragging it right on top of our original sequence so just like this and it adds another track and it puts it right after the animation so if i click play it'll do the back handspring and i put the back handspring in there twice my apologies we're gonna go ahead and just do the same thing put the roll back in there or the uh, backflip i mean so you can see now he goes from a back handspring to a backflip but there's a little bit of a lag here you know, it's kind of, we want it to go more smoothly to the backflip transition. And how we do that is very easy. We're going to delete both of these tracks out, and we're going to minimize this. And now we're going to go to our back handspring animation. And this is another way that you can edit animations within Unreal Engine. So we're going to look for the point in which he kind of does this little kip up, does this land, like right there, right around frame 43. Now, from the animation sequence, under the Curves tab, you can right-click on this, and we're going to delete um, a frame section. So we see that frame 43 is right about when we want it, so we're going to put this right around frame 43, just to make sure we're at the right point. And then we're going to remove frame 44 to 51. So you can remove anything at a certain point, whether it be from frame and then after, or from a previous frame and then to zero. So you can remove the starting point or any point after it. 
really, really, really nice. But now, since I removed that section, that little end piece, if I do the back handspring, he's going to do his little kip up, and then he's going to kind of go right back into it. There's that little kind of end bit is gone now. So he doesn't have quite the full reset that he would normally have. So, all right. So now that we've done that, we don't need to do anything as far as keyframing. We just need to click on save. And now if we go back to our Flippy Boy 1 animation montage and we search for that animation again. And I go to and drag it on in over the default slot group and then put the uh, backflip right after it. You'll see it's a little bit more fluid. You know, there's a lot more, there's a little bit more tweaking that could probably happen to this. Like, maybe make it so that way he kind of gets right into the flip motion. Maybe kind of blend some sort of up, you know, some upright so he goes from this to this a little bit more fluidly. You know, there's a lot of different ways because you can add more than one. I mean, you can add tons of animations. I mean, I can, I can just literally have him do so many different things that are just completely out of character. So he goes that... And then a backflip, and he gets knocked backwards, knocked back, and then he just does a back handspring again. So you can add as many as you want. For this one, we're just going to go ahead and take these out really quickly. So we just have the backflip and the back handspring. All right, so now that we have it in a montage, we want to turn it into an animation sequence. This way, it's usable within the anim graph. And how you would do that is that down here, there's a little bit of uh, some options here. There's a play button, you know, skip, all that good stuff. But we want the record button. So from the record button, we're going to click that. And we're going to search to our folder, which is the playable character folder. We're going to change the animation name to Flippy Boy 2 We're going to keep the sample rate for 30 FPS because all of my animations are set to 30 FPS. If you have 60 FPS animations, you can change this if you would like. Um, I'm going to keep this at 30 as far as the end after duration point, you can select this if you would like. You just want to make sure to scrub through your montage to see exactly what the time duration is and then set it to that and it'll stop at that point. We're not going to use the end after duration though because I'm going to show you what, you know, the way you can do it without even having to use that. So now that we have our animation name, our sample rate set to 30 FPS, we're going to click OK. And as you can see here, we've got a little recording, Flippy Boy, and then it's recording. So now if I just go ahead and click on play, let do the whole sequence, stop it, and then stop the recording. So I paused it with play, and then just stopped the recording. As you can see, it's been successfully recorded. So now I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And it's just by clicking on the open button. Now, if I go through and scrub, you'll see there's a lot of dead space, but then eventually he's going to do his animation, and then he's going to try and go into like the start of the next sequence because I didn't stop it right away. And this is where that end after duration can really come into play because you normally then won't have to do this part. But that's totally fine even if you don't. So we're looking at 270. So we're going to take off of 271 to whatever the end frame is. So we're going to go 275, 273, 269, 273. There we go. Alright, so now we have that. Now we also just need to see where the animation starts at. So we're going to scrub through and look for where that position starts. It looks like that's right around, we'll say frame 180. So we're going to look for frame 180. 182, here we go. So we're going to click on this one, remove frame 0 to 180. And now, full animation, start from the back handspring to the back flip and no dead space. So now we can just click on save, minimize this, and now we have the Flippy Boy sequence, which should be, let's see, where did that go? There we go, Flippy Boy 2 animation sequence. Somehow that didn't go into my playable character folders. So I'm just gonna move that there really quickly so that way it's in the proper folder. There we go. All right, so Flippy Boy 2, and you can see it's an animation sequence. It um, doesn't have any root motion in it, but I'm sure you could enable root, 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 yeah, root motion if you wanted to. As you can see, these are all in-place animations, so I don't have to enable root motion. Um, but So this is how you would be able to sequence animations together and make something really, really, really cool utilizing multiple animations and turn it all into one. Now, one last thing that I do want to just show you really quickly is some things you can do with the removing of frames within the animations. So I'm going to look up the Paragon Twin Blast. I'm going to go to Characters, Heroes, Twin Blast, and I'm going to go to Animations. I'm going to search up a specific one. I'm going to search DAV for the emotes. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up really quickly. 
if it wants to open. There we go. All right, so this one's pretty cool. I'm actually currently messing around with this one in a game that I'm working on. Um, so if you look at here, you'll see he, his arms kind of extend out and then his guns disappear. And then he kind of goes back to a motion. And then it come back up. So you have the full motion here. So this is the emote. For some reason, it's only playing a portion of the animation. Um, but as you can see here, if you wanted to take just this section of it, and you can make it so that way, let's see. Maybe this is an edited one that I messed around with. We'll just look at emotes in general. Here, we'll look at the gun toss. All right, so as you can see here, let's say you just wanted this side, right? You wanted the, the right side. Well, what you could do is from where it's guns down by his hips, maybe like right about, right about there. So we'll go to the curves track, we'll remove 23. Uh, let's see, it won't let me remove 23, so we'll have to remove everything after. So we'll see where he flips the gun, catches it, and then puts it away right around 61. So we'll say... 60 so we'll just go here we're 60 to 226 all right and then we'll go to the curves track and when we're going to remove 0 to 51 let's see 0 to 55 53 50 that should be fine so now it's just that section of the animation track if you wanted just that, you can use that as like a cool way to be able to like, you know, draw or holster your weapon. Um, so there's really some really cool ways that you can do this. Now, also keep in mind with the rate scale, if I set this to negative one, it'll play in reverse. It looks like he's kind of shooting the gun up and then he kind of comes back. So, I mean, it does look a little weird because of the way that it's, you know, playing backwards and stuff, but it's just something to keep in mind that you can do some really cool stuff by using the rate scale, removing some frames, and then, you know, adding it into an animation montage section. But I hope this was informative for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or any concerns, issues, or whatever, feel free to reach out to me through comments, or you can message me on the uh, directly through YouTube. Always happy to uh, discuss any problems or any, you know, other ideas that somebody might have. But again, I hope that you guys enjoyed, and as always, stay animated.